So my amazing guest today on Genius in Your Inbox is Jill Whalen. Hi, Jill. Hi, Gabe. Thanks for having me. Oh, no, it's an absolute pleasure. So Jill and I were just doing a catch up before I hit record because we haven't spoken for, I don't know, a long time, a number of years, I think. And <laughs> Jill's basic question was, what is it we're doing? <laughs> what is it we're going to talk about? So I gave her, I gave her my potted kind of history of what I think this was about. So I'll just share a little bit of that for for anybody watching the um, watching or listening. There was a conversation in a uh, three principles coaching group some weeks back now. It's probably four or five weeks ago, I would say. And Dominic Scafidi had had. It was all it was talking about following up with clients and what systems do people use and what process do they have. And in came Dominic Scafidi. If you haven't seen my interview with Dominic in the same series, Genius in Your Inbox, uh, go and watch it. I'll share a link under this one as well because it's just brilliant, absolutely amazing. So Dominic came in and was like, Oh no, I don't do that. <laughs> like that doesn't happen. I don't, I don't, I don't follow things up. That's not the way it works. And there was then a really interesting kind of like um, exchange of comments and and whatever. And I reached out to Dominic and Jill had joined in with that, hadn't you, Jill? Yeah. yeah. On that, on that thread. Said basically the same thing as Dominic. That it, from my old business, I mean, I've been retired now or since like 2013, but that yeah. exactly what he was saying about you know if they don't want to work, you know, why should I chase them down? Kind of thing. If they don't <laughs> yeah. want to work with me. And and that just I just I loved it because I love I love when um, when I hear stuff that number one goes against the grain so that that kind of like my you know mischievous personality appeals to that without a doubt and then secondly there's like there's a gravitas there's a wisdom about where you're speaking from just like you said there and and you know there was just such certainty in what you were saying. It's like, oh, no, 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 I didn't do that, my SEO business. So as you say, you've been retired for some years now, but you're in the land of SEO. You were legendary, weren't you? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I was, I was, I was, you know, what they're calling now the one of the pioneers in the industry, you know, before it had a name and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I was, I, was doing it for almost 20 years before I retired before there was ever even Google when I started so wow. yeah and I just and I just didn't know anything about business I wasn't a business major I was a mom at home <laughs> playing around on the computer so it was all just wow. me, com whatever was common sense and the way I ran my business same way like just I didn't you know I didn't care at first it was just I wasn't trying to make money I was just like fooling around telling people had it helping people had it and stuff just you know giving them information here's how you can do it and then people would be like well that sounds too complicated when you do it for me and that's how i started it you know oh really money. yeah basically oh that's really interesting so so you were kind of fooling around i guess building an understanding of what was going on and then yeah, you... i had i had a parenting website that i used to fool oh. around with and try to get that you know found in search engine but i i like nobody knew how to do this and when i figured it out i wanted to share and, yeah. and i was on some webmaster lists and things like that you know they were not really forums back then they were emails and i and i started a forum later but um yeah so it was just just me sharing i mean i always just when i knew stuff i always wanted to share it yeah that's beautiful isn't it i love that but i loved <laughs> i love the way you were saying no, I was just, you know, a stay-at-home mom and I was just fooling around on the computer. And then you just happened to crack the code of this thing that must be goodness knows how many billion dollar industry nowadays. It, it, it was funny. And then for and for me to um, become well known, I mean, I was also not only a mom at home, but shy. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then and then I was speaking at conferences around the world and, and it but it was all it was just flow like you you said i don't know if you said it live on the recording but when, when we first yeah, started I, think talking, I, said, I said it before i hit record didn't i yeah yeah it, it was just it just flowed into that i was not a plan i had no plan i <laughs> i didn't you know <laughs> like when i was little right oh i want to be an seo uh, consultant <laughs> <laughs> did you not dream of that when you were seven years old is that not like your your there best were no com there were no computers let alone internet <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? I love that. And it it's so interesting. 
exploring this because all the kind of standard questions are, that my mind's drawn to. So, you know, well, how did you do that then? <laughs> they all dissolve, don't they? Well, it was the exactly. next thing and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. It, it was. And it and it was the, the lack of like feeling like I needed to make money at it brought more money. Like it was like it's like all the stuff. It's totally like power of attraction stuff, law of attraction and and all that stuff that just like I could in looking back, I could see how that's how it all worked. It was just me having fun. I was loved it. You know, I was really interested in what I was doing. Yeah. And so yeah. that that just me play what I I used to say I played around on the computer and that's what my kids would say you know what does your mother do she plays on the computer all day. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's amazing, isn't it? And I love that you said you can, you can you can look back and 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 have some understanding now about what was going on. So can you can you just like like slow that right down and sort of share with people how you see that looking back at you know at just how the whole kind of story unfolded because like said really quickly it's just like well I was a stay-at-home mom I played on the computer kid said mom just plays on the computer and I ended up talking internationally at conferences and being a leading authority on SEO before even SEO really existed but can you can you kind of like I really want people yeah. I mean I think I can get a sense of it but can you you slow it down and unpack it's it a bit I mean, the the big thing in looking back and, and what I even would have probably been able to tell you at the time was you know, that it was the, having a passion for it, doing something that I really liked, loved, you know, that that passion, it like I, I, I called it for a while, like passion power. If you're running on passion oh, wow. power, it's it's like it's not the same as, um, you know, here's the gonna write that down. I love that phrase. <laughs> Yeah, it's and it, it's it's like twenty times more energy than um, you know you, if you were just working a nine to five job or something that you didn't care about. But when you're passionate about something, you you don't think about it. Like you don't. It's not hard. It's not work. It's play. And and you know. So that's I would always tell people. You know, just do what you love. Like if you do what you love without any desire to necessarily turn it into a business you never know what can come of it you know a lot of people end up in with a business because they've been doing something they love so much and then they like say pottery or whatever and suddenly they have 50 million pots around and they you know and yeah. so they yeah. start selling them or you know but they just love making pots <laughs> you know whatever it is if you if you just love it and just do it and and help people and give them away i mean i gave away tons of um i used to literally do free website reports for people um like like i said before and then and then it would um if it was too hard people would look at it and they'd be like well you know can you do it <laughs> or or yeah. or you know you know that kind of stuff because and i didn't care i liked i just liked giving i just liked helping because i i wanted everybody to know this cool thing that i knew yeah, that's amazing. And I, I guess what's interesting, what I'm hearing there, so like, like, correct me if I'm wrong, is that you were you were doing it from the direction of it made sense to do because you really loved doing it. You weren't doing it as a marketing tactic that somebody had taught you to drive clients into a funnel to generate no. revenue. <laughs> no, no, and that's honestly, like the that's like the outside in viewpoint, isn't it? Oh, if I do exactly. if I do analysis of people's websites or whatever then they're going to want my services that's the like like exactly the, the, and, yeah. and those processes come from people revert trying to reverse engineering yeah. like what yeah. i did you know, like as if there was a you know so like all right well, what did she do you know and, yeah. and and yes if you reverse engineering it looks like that but that's why that doesn't work for a lot of people because they're not they're like you know i mean if somebody told me to do that i wouldn't have known, you know funnels and breath and <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, what the hell you're talking about i don't know how to do that all i know is i i like doing this and i'm <laughs> like telling people and i'll you know charge you money if you want help to do it to actually and do i charge 
And I charged only a little bit at first, too. I had other people in the industry getting mad at me because they're like, you really have to charge higher. You're, you're bringing down our prices. <laughs> yeah. <So> bad. <laughs> yeah, unlucky. <laughs> that's, a, yeah. that's amazing. So you, you said, I think I caught you saying, that how it all began was you had a parenting website and yeah. then you wanted to get that listed essentially so that people could find you on on search engines i guess so what was the what was the impetus be, behind the parenting website how did that come about like right right at the beginning well um yeah even to create a website i had i had read in the newspaper at some point something about a a, a, a local a bbs a bulletin board system back this was oh, okay. early early 90s there was no yeah internet or that we knew of to, so to, to speak of but for some reason this in this internet bulletin board or whatever they called it intrigued me so much we didn't have a computer or anything but i i had cut it out of the newspaper and i saved it somewhere wow. in case we ever got a modem and i don't know what possessed me i don't even know what a modem was <laughs> and wow. um because but i loved computers i had worked at a computer company doing just word processing after college but oh, um really? But I, but I saved that, and then my husband had to go to law school, or, or decided to go to law school, and we needed actual which people didn't have to get, so, so we could access the law databases. And like when he said, like I need to get a computer, we needed a computer and a modem. Like it just reminded me of this. Thing this is a little saved. bit of paper. I pulled it out, you know, after we got it and all set up, and you just had to dial into this number. It was a local number, and I just. At first, it was just like you could you could chat with other local people and you could play like these dragon games. So I was like playing these dragon games with like 15 year old boys, I think, because <laughs> they were the only other ones who you had yeah, yeah, the other people to play with. Yeah, exactly. But then um, they branched out where they had Internet service on this thing. And I figured that it was like very convoluted how to get online and I figured it out and the guy who ran it like saw that I figured out how to do it and he's like nobody can figure out how to do this can you like write me some instructions that maybe other people can do and I did that and I, I so meanwhile I was getting free I got like free service from him for years um, because I would do stuff like that for yeah. him wow. and I wrote those out for him and then he told me about like search engines he's like he's yeah. like maybe you want you would be interested in doing this i think i had once i was on there i created the parenting website from there because you could you could do it and then and i think he thought i might be interested in this new thing you know he saw they just were calling it like website submittals or something like that submissions yeah. and um and i saw that and i'm like yeah that looks really cool <laughs> and, and that's basically how i got my start in all that it just again just sort of fell into place that's amazing isn't it i love that it's funny where, where my brain went um which i'm sure we'll talk about in a minute was it was like oh okay you you love understanding how things work and then sharing your understanding of how it works so no wonder you fell in love with the principles then yes and i was doing the same thing with that yeah. too and 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 i happened to have a really good knack at, at making complicated things simple, simple. especially in writing yeah. like yeah. i'm able to boil things down to their essential stuff and so i was able to do that with seo and then with the principles that's what actually made me fall in love with the principles to begin with because i could see they were the essence of all other spiritual stuff like they're the building blocks and i and i and i felt like that really reminded me of how i did seo i was always just get to the bait. You just got to do the basics. People wanted to do all the, like you said, the funnels and the bundles. And, the, <laughs> and uh, but, but the basic things is really what were necessary. And that's what I, the principles without the foundation of knowing that, you know, your thoughts create your own reality. You, the, anything else you're hearing isn't going to make sense till you sort of understand that yeah. basic building block. And that, that's why I really love that when I first heard it. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, that it just makes so much sense, doesn't it? It's just it's just brilliant. And I, I love how you said that you could you could sort of I can imagine you seeing through 
the complexity almost like looking at you know what I'm imagining is lines and lines of code and you'd be able to see exactly the bits but if you just utilize that that was the bit that had the impact right. and I can see then how you would have utilized that in sharing the principles or in coaching or in any other you know sort of relationship of just being able to hear and feel the bits that matter and then speaking like concisely to that that's that's a remarkable gift isn't it it, it, it is I mean I'm yeah I'm I'm lucky to, <laughs> to have it I think yeah yeah that's amazing so so uh, let's talk a little bit about the principles if that's okay because I know you know lots of people who are going to listen to this will know what the principles are or will have come across it or don't know and will go what are they talking about and so I can write about that in the description a little bit but just share with us a little bit Jill how did you come across the principles or rather how did the principles come and tap on your shoulder and go oi Jill <laughs> we've got another project for you you've done SEO <laughs> how did that all kind of happen yeah that was um well I I was still doing my SEO and I but I had gained a lot of weight and was being just very unhealthy and stuff and I decided finally after years of thinking about it that I really needed to lose weight and get healthy so I just made a decision to do it and um, that's something else I learned later that when you really make a decision you know like yeah. now I'm definitely going to do it you, you know it just again flows into place so for me that, that that worked I you know I just counted calories and started eating healthy and exercised more and then and lost 25 pounds in like six months or whatever it was wow. but it but it it sort of changed me like my psyche a little bit just the, like I started getting curious about identity I'm like how could I be this person you know one day I was unhealthy and I used to say I was allergic to vegetables and exercise <laughs> and 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 now suddenly in the yeah. short span of time I was this complete other person and people would say you know what did you do with Jill which is what I later oh, there was the website blog. wasn't it yeah, your blog. yeah, yeah. Because yeah. people would literally say it because I was so different. So I sort of got curious about that, and that's what sort of started my exploration. Oh, wow. um, you know, and again, that's in looking back at it. Um, yeah. And then, you know, fell across Michael Neal um, oh. with something he had said. Or I don't know how I. Oh, oh, I was listening to um, Hay House Radio where he. Hmm. I don't. I think he still might have a show there. Um, and and he, I was just like, oh my god, this guy is a genius, you know. <laughs> and I, and I was just, but I didn't know what he was talking about, right? You know, yeah, he, yeah. it was just like, huh? And so I kept listening to this like one lecture of his over and over, and I sent it to my husband. And I'm like, do you know what he's talking about? <laughs> I thought maybe he would know. It sounded sciency or something. And um, we were both kind of like, my husband goes, well, it sounds like he's saying thoughts create your feelings, or. And I said, yeah, I know, but I don't really get what that means. Yeah. And um, so then I started learning about some, I listened to some other people's things. I found at the time there was that site that Rudy and Jenny had. Oh, okay, yeah. News. And I heard, I saw some things Rudy and Jenny were doing, and it suddenly clicked to me um, about thoughts creating your uh, reality because the night before I had that I listened to them, I had this thing with my husband where, he, we were eating dinner or I told him dinner was ready and he's like okay but I didn't like the way he said it <laughs> I, and and all this stuff was going through my head yeah, and we yeah. ate dinner and it was quiet and then and then he went out afterwards and but my whole my mind was just Bleh. and then um and and but it was one word uh, that's what all he said was one word so the next day when I when I uh was listening to Jenny say, you know, thoughts create your feelings. I was like, oh my God, that's exactly, I was in this tizzy from one word. It was just my mind doing it. And then suddenly I got it. And then I could understand Michael Neal better and, and other people. But that, that's kind of how I really got into it. My first real insight was that. That's amazing, isn't it? I, I, <clears throat> I'm not sure I'd ever, I've, I'd ever heard you tell that story, actually, because it's not dissimilar to like for me as well it was it was a confusion point so I was I was at work I told this story actually last night in a meeting but I was at work and uh we were having a meeting and things were going really well and I remember walking out of my office opening the door to pop to the loo 
you know, like like full of the joy of spring, like, yay, this is brilliant, go me, all that kind of stuff. 24 hours later, pretty much the same group of people, another meeting. I remember walking out of my office, putting my hand on my door, thinking, I hate this. This sucks. <laughs> this is the worst thing ever. Why did I ever leave teaching? What was wrong with me? And as I literally, as I put my hand on on the, the toilet door, it hit me. It was like, whoa, hang on. How, we, how does this work? Yesterday, situation today, pretty much the same, totally different experiences of the same thing. And that, like, bust a fuse in here somewhere. Um, mm -hmm. then, it, then it took me a bit longer to, to track somebody down. It was Jamie Smart, actually, that eventually uh, said, oh, right, okay, I've, I've got something I think might be useful for you to, to hear. And... I was just like a mad sponge when I heard it. It was like, because <laughs> it started yeah. to answer so many things. Yeah. It's been uncertain, you know. And and again, like you get that basic building block that, yeah. oh, it's, it's, it's me, not, yeah. not yeah. the situation. Like yeah. that totally turns the world on its head. Yeah. yeah. I'm the situation <laughs> yeah. that I thought was happening out there. No, no, no. I'm the situation that, that I'm reacting to, you know? Yeah. That's just incredible. So, so you, you understood Michael a bit more. That's really cool. And then how did that sort of part of your journey unfold? What, as you sort of deepened your understanding, what, what kind of opened up for you? Well, I, I realized that I had, um, been anxious all my life and didn't even know it. <laughs> I just thought that was normal to have your head, you know, basically hurt all day, you know, <laughs> being full, being full and, yeah. and, and hurting. But that my head cleared just from, you know, the more I learned that my head just got clearer, the noise stopped, it just got quieter. And that left more, opened up more space to hear more and more. And, um, you know, I just started getting into different, I, you know, I, I listen to a lot of non-duality kind of stuff now. Now, now I feel like I don't know anything anymore. Like, yeah, even when yeah, I'm yeah. telling you this story, like, I, I don't even, like, I'm like, I don't know, it doesn't help, it doesn't feel like it helps me anymore. I still, like, I feel, I feel like I, I get anxious again, and I'm, I'm, I sometimes feel like I'm back to square one, but I think that's, you know, what Sid said, just go live your life. Like, I'm just living my life now. I, I'm not really, I'm not real active in frequency stuff. I don't coach or anything. I'm just we've moved to a new place and my grandson was born. So I'm just, Oh, wow. Fantastic. With him and he, he's here today, but he's napping right now. So, yeah. um, so yeah, well, I'm just like living my life and enjoying things. Yeah. That's beautiful. And I, I, I love that. Like, uh, yeah, I got heavily into non-duality the same. I just, I loved the, Oh, I don't know. Like the, almost the brutal cleanness of it, the, the, the absolute simplicity in it. Um, but you can't apply it. <laughs> you can't go and apply it to your life, you know. Exactly. I still the one thing I still listen to, like at night when I'm trying to fall asleep. So I mostly sleep through. But I love Joel um, Goldsmith. Have you heard of him? Mm. Um, from the fifties and sixties, and his stuff is right on. He's very, it's very pure, and uh, I. Mm. That's the one thing I, <laughs> I, I listen to all the time. But I, otherwise, I'm kind of. I don't care. <laughs> I don't really, I'm not active in any of the groups or anything. But I think also it's like anything, isn't it? Um, anything can become a drug. So, so what pointed us to the inside can become like an outside thing to try and acquire more of, to try and yes. quell an anxious feeling, you know, and you, and you end up tripping over your own shoelaces without realizing you've just tied them. It's just this time the knot's called learning more about the principles or seeing more about non-duality or realizing there's no separate cell or anything. You can trip yourself over with it, with anything. And that, I think that is the trap. Like, mm. like for me, because I wasn't, I didn't know I was, I wasn't really searching for something. It, again, it was like the SEO. I sort of fell into it this spiritual stuff and I, I was never I wasn't like a seeker my whole life so I wasn't trying to feel better I didn't know I felt bad <laughs> and, <laughs> and so and so for me it helped because it wasn't me specifically trying to feel better now I this is the trap for me now because now I'll get anxious occasionally 
and I'm thinking, all right, what do I do? I'll listen to this. I'll, you know, and I'm yeah, going back yeah. to the, and, and yet then it hits me, wait a minute, you know, that doesn't work. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> like you, there's nothing you can do about it. Just be anxious like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, exactly. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like, like, like be with the rain until the rain stops, you know? Yeah. You can and run outside and try and shout at the clouds all you like. And I mean, occasionally that could probably be fun, to be honest. But, um, <laughs> you know, the crazy guy shouting at the sky, I quite like that idea. But yeah, exactly. There's there's a real innocence yeah. in that, isn't there? And the, uh, great. And then I hear the words that I used to tell people, you know, that, well, you know, it's, it, you should be able to be okay with whatever it is. And I'm sitting in my own head going, no, but I'm not okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. You hear it right back at you. So yeah. I don't know. It's just, I think it's good to know this stuff, but then we're here in this dual yeah. world and, you know, just live it. Bad shit's going to happen. No, <laughs> completely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's Not that's so in, yeah it's so interesting you say that because um like 2019 I kind of fell out of coaching it was like I was heavily into non-duality and it's like to me I mean I know other people disagree but to me non-duality and coaching don't sit very easily together you know telling somebody there's no one there to do it when they want to do things it doesn't really yeah doesn't, <laughs> doesn't add well as a message but then a couple you know like even as recent as last year could be actually i remember just just listening to it was a steve hardison on a video and thought man he's full of life like he sounds he sounds you know pretty much like any other great spiritual teacher i've ever heard or non-dual teacher or principal basically but he's just talking to people about stuff and, and i was like oh man i miss doing that i like that i yeah. like talking to people about stuff and then somehow that kind of like, for me, closed the idea of there being these two worlds. Mm. The world and, and a world of, like you say, of bad stuff happening or good stuff happening or whatever. And it became like, no, you can you could talk about anything. It really wouldn't matter. Would yeah. And, and I think what, you know, the little bit I've listened to Steve Hardison too, like, I mean, it sounds like he's just saying, be just be nice, be kind to people, <laughs> you know, just be more yeah. loving and yeah. see what happens, you know, and I, yeah. and I, I've yeah. been trying to do that too, because that was never me <laughs> in my <laughs> past life <laughs> of this, yeah. life. Um, you know, yeah. and, and that in itself is, is, a, is, is working in a way, or it's, you know, it's just to remember, you know, oh yeah, remember, yeah. you gotta be nice, <laughs> yeah. be nice, be kind, be generous. And, yeah, that's beautiful. And I think that must, that must hark back to, you know, I've heard, a, I've heard, I think I've heard on a recording, and I've heard a few people who who saw Sid, you know, um, when he was talking and doing the retreats and all that kind of thing. He'd he'd just say, "Oh yeah, no session today. Just just go and live, go and walk, go and breathe, enjoy the sun mm -hmm. on your face, and yeah, take it, you know." And everybody who'd kind of paid for the retreat were like, "But but hang on, you need to sit in that chair and fill our heads with more." And he's like, "No, nah, honestly, just don't worry about it. Go and." Go and have a loving and simple life. That's what it's all about. And yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. that. that is that is it. Oh, that's beautiful. That's amazing. Um yeah, thank you, Jill. Thank you so much for for agreeing to do this. It's it's been lovely to have the chance yeah, to my pleasure. hear the story. And and just I just really wanted people to hear that that simplicity of unfolding, you know, where you go from wanting to set up a parenting website to being the mom playing on the computer to ending up as like an international speaker on SEO and, you know, people in the industry going, charge more, charge more. <laughs> and then another revelation and then, you know, another unfolding and then just this beautiful, you know, beautiful life that you're obviously having and getting caught up when you do and coming out of it again. And, and so life goes on. Exactly. That's Amazing. a good summary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hurrah. <laughs> Jill, thanks ever so much. Thank you. Nice to see you.